Seoul's industry ministry plans to reduce Korea's reliance on certain countries with regard to sourcing materials such as urea and graphite. So how does the country hope to achieve this goal? What are pundits saying about this plan? And can Korea nurture self-sufficiency for some materials? Welcome to yet another edition of Issues and Insiders. I'm Min San Hee. Today we explore Korea's efforts to diversify supply chains to reduce risk factors. For more on this, I have Professor Oh Jun Sok at Sumyang Women's University live on the line. Professor Oh, it's good to have you on. Thank you for having me. I also have Professor Kim Young Jin at Sogong University with us as well live. Professor Kim, welcome back. Good afternoon. Professor Oh, let's begin with some details mm. about the so called 3050 strategy and your thoughts regarding this latest government effort. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Sunny. Uh, the Korean government has decided to lower import dependence uh, on 185 materials uh, to 50 percent by 2030 in the name of 3040 strategy. Uh, as of last year, Korea's import dependence averaged 70 percent, with some items exceeding 90 percent. According to a government survey, out of 1,719 items in 2022, Korea depended on China for 930 items, or 54.1 percent dependency, Japan for 270 items, and the United States for 146 items. No doubt, a forming efficient supply chain is top priority. It is, however, true as we experience the importance of resilient supply chain during the COVID-19 pandemic. Nowadays, the degree of risk insulation uh, uh, supply chain uh, could be reflected by the capability for international trade safety. In this main, uh, the industrial supply chain 3050 uh, was introduced to strengthen the level of trade safety. 185 supply chain uh, stabilization items were categorized into three main uh, areas. First, high-tech strategic industry group include semiconductors, secondary batteries, displays, biotechnologies, and electronics uh, products. Second, a major and new industry groups contains automobiles, uh, shipbuilding, machineries, uh, robots, and aviation. And lastly, basic material in, uh, industry group has metals, fibers, ceramics, uh, and chemicals. In particular, the government will focus on supply chain of rail gases, silicon wafers, and hydrogen fluoride for semiconductors, and lithium hydroxide, artificial graphite, and separators for secondary batteries. To make it short, the 3050 strategy aims a capability building for robust supply chain not to be threatened and challenged by trade war. Right, indeed. So the gist of the strategy is to ease mm. dependence on import uh, markets, that is, to less than 50% mm. for 185 items by the year 2030. Now, that mm. being said then, Professor Kim, how effective do you believe this so-called 3050 strategy will be? Well, you know, as Professor uh, Oh explained well, it is very good to have, you know, the 3050 uh, strategy to ease the supply problems of critical materials. Although, you know, to me, it uh, is a little bit late. Uh, as the saying goes, you know, when you feel uh, it is late, it is the earliest time to do something, right? Uh, so we have, you know, experienced a couple of supply chain disruptions, you know, recently related to uh, semiconductor manufacturing and urea solutions. In 2019, uh, the Japanese government, you know, banned the export of three key materials to Korea, including uh, fluorinated, you know, polyimide, uh, photoregist and hydrogen uh, fluoride, you know, which are critical for semiconductor and display productions, um, and which caused huge trouble to uh, Korean you know, semiconductor industry. Um, fortunately, it has been lifted this year. Uh, we also had the uh, urea solution shortage in 2021 when Chinese government imposed restrictions on the urea solution export. And uh, uh, last October again, uh, Chinese government stopped the export of urea solution, which was and is rattling uh, Korean industry 
Um, the, the urea shortage, you know, did not erupt, you know, uh, in a day, though. Um, Chinese government announced these possible export restrictions on urea solution in September 2023. Uh, China warned of that uh, possibility uh, in, the, in the aftermath of the electricity shortage in the country. Um, you know, that means, you know, the, the urea crisis is somewhat anticipated, but the government has failed to predict the situation and from a longer perspective. Now, we have the 30-50 strategy which is good to have because you know when things go wrong high dependency of you know uh, key materials will always cause you know serious problems in the final product production right of course professor staying with urea then mm -hmm. what are the chances of korea producing its own urea uh, uh, we have to think uh, and then we have to see the opposite considering opportunity cost of production korea uh, is not making its own urea korean economy has long been based on value-added high-end products taking good advantage of chinese cheap labor and readily available raw materials china has been a good neighborhood of korean economy in 2021 uh, as professor kim talk uh, talk about uh, china might be disheartened uh, that uh, korean forgot its neighbor China imposed restrictions on export of urea solution, normally cheap and easy to purchase substance. Korea lay bare the supply chain vulnerability, which has heavily relied on its neighbor, uh, China. Industrial officials said uh, if uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, this, uh, the current urea uh, export suspension uh, continues by the Chinese authority, it could deal another blow to Korea. What about changing the source of securing urea when its own uh, production is economically inefficient, as Sonny commented? Uh, there is a story. International trade characterizes tyranny of distance. Distance makes cost the longer, the more. Then one makes the resurgence of a supply crunch in uh, the 2021 and what could have been the timing of the repetition. Two reasons, basically. Uh, first, after May so COVID-19, the supply chain reformation brought out uh, China manufacturing exodus. Many companies tried to make an exit from China in the middle of uh, China-US trade war. China has to prove the identity of its uh, economy in the main of global supply chain, taking this uh, critical role, uh, which can never be omitted, nor replaceable. Secondly, uh, this is more important, there has been FTA uh, between Korea and China ever since 2015. As a result, mutually a dependent relationship has been tightened economically and diplomatically. Now comes the time of updating and revision of FTA uh, starting from, two, uh, uh, starting from uh, next year, which means China needs timely to pump up the negotiation power at the table. Uh, it must be the right timing uh, if needed. Right. Hopefully it is the right time next year then. Professor Kim, you talked about the urea shortage that we experienced two years ago in 2021. And back then we saw quite a bit of logistics disruption amid the shortage mm -hmm. in supplies of urea. Do you see a similar scenario unfolding this year? Uh, the first of all, you know, the similarity of uh, urea solution uh, uh, ban, uh, export ban, caused huge problems all over the uh, industry. Um, including uh, transportation and also uh, trucking, all that kind of things, right? Uh, the difference of the two actions of uh, stopping urea uh, solution export by Chinese government in 2021 and 2023 are a little bit different. In 2021, the export uh, restriction of Chinese uh, government on urea you know, solution export uh, was caused by a diplomatic conflict between China and Australia. Australian government decided to reduce the export of high quality oil to China, uh, coal uh, to China. That is the main source of urea solution production. Uh, in responding to the ban of Chinese government on the uh, import of Australian wood, wine and copper. At the time, Korea did not, you know, uh, have any diplomatic problem with China, uh, so it could not expect the ban, that sudden ban of urea solution uh, by Chinese government. But the sudden decision on the urea solution export, you know, uh, struck 
uh, Korean economy in a very, very negative way. However, the decision of Chinese government on the ban of the Urea Solution Export this year, um, you know, is a little bit, you know, different because, you know, they experience kind of shortage of the electricity uh, in the country. Um, and also, uh, it could be expected. That means, you know, Korean government had time to prepare for the incident. As a matter of fact, you know, uh, according to Korean uh, government uh, report, Korea has four months uh, inventory of urea solution in reserves, which is good. So we do have some stockpiles, of course, then. Professor, earlier this week, working level officials from South Korea and China held talks here in the capital city for the first time to address supply mm. chain related matters. Could you tell us a bit about their discussions and, of course, their broader implications? Mm -hmm. uh, from an economic perspective, there is famous reason that China makes this threat of supply chain disruption. It might be an uncredible threat because China challenges for a painstaking game uh, rather than gains sharing gain. Therefore, it should be handled and solved diplomatically uh, within the framework of trade negotiation. Korea and China discuss details on operating uh, the uh, bilateral so-called hotline. Uh, we could make a, a forecast of a diplomatic uh, steps afterward, step one, two, and three. Step one, recognition of trade issues. Uh, step two, understanding mutual necessity of cooperation. And finally, organizing a permanent channel or committee based on mutual respect and prosperity. Now, uh, let's take a double look uh, at the uh, track record. So last time, uh, China restricted the urea export in uh, 2021. Korea suffered major disruption. Uh, to its uh, logistics network. In 2023, as Professor Kim talked about, uh, China's customs authority blocked the export of Chinese urea to Korean companies, but have yet to provide any explanation. Uh, step two, recognition stage has passed. In a way to handle uh, this uh, kind of issues, uh, the working level talk were held in Seoul after reaching a consensus on the issues uh, when Trade Minister met in Beijing. During the meeting, the two nations uh, discussed the details of the hotline as well as other pending issues, understanding the mutual necessity stages. Implication of the uh, track record might be like this. The latest move raised concern as Korea suffered a major supply crunch, while Korea has been making efforts to stabilize the supply of key material imports, it is apparent for Korea to need China as a major trade partner. In this end, for the sake of mutual prosperity by raising trade issues, uh, China wants to verify economic cooperation and negotiation uh, between uh, two countries. Right. And staying, of course, with trade issues between these two countries, Professor mm -hmm. Kim, graphite imports, I believe, are also a concern for Korea as over 90 percent of its graphite imports come from neighboring China. What more can you tell us? Right. You know, uh, there is always China, right, <laughs> which caused big problem for our, you know, key material supplies. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Korea is facing uh, growing uh, graphite shortage and you know may have to um, seek out alternative uh, sources other than uh, China. Uh, graphite is commonly uh, used in battery uh, anodes of uh, electric vehicles, and everybody knows that. And unfortunately, over 90% uh, of uh, South Korea's you know, graphite uh, import came from China um, between January and September uh, this year. That that's that's amazing, right? Uh, so uh, China's you know export curve on graphite, which will uh, affect take effect you know uh, this month, uh, will affect the capacity of uh, the battery uh, production of Korean companies. Um, China has credited you know this kind of move as an effort to protect national security. I think you know Korean government also need to act just like you know China. We have to do something to protect our national security, uh, to secure all this kind of uh, key materials. As you know, uh, I don't know. You know, we may produce you know those kind of materials on our own, or we may have to have you know uh, uh, sources from other countries. And then diversification is the key uh, for this you know act.
Right, indeed, diversification is the key. And yet, Professor O, oh, pundits do claim, of course, that China remains the preferred import market because of its low price tags. That, keeping that in mind, what more can the government here do to ensure that Korean companies do not divert back to a single import market because of the price? Uh, yes, I agree. Uh, China is known to be a major supplier of various critical raw materials at a fairly competitive price. And this dominance in the global supply chain has significant implications for uh, global trade. Its control over production pricing and export policies gives it significant influence in determining market conditions, supply availability, and even trade flows. This influence can create vulnerability in global supply chains, as excessive reliance on China for critical raw material may lead to supply disruption, price fluctuations, and geopolitical uh, risks. Combined, all these kind of risks are uh, called the trade uh, the kind of uh, uh, risks related with trade safety. It has uh, prompted other countries to uh, diversify their supply sources and develop strategies to secure critical materials to reduce dependency on a single supplier. As measures handle this supply chain vulnerability, it is required urgently for Korean government to set up a policy agenda for international trade security among related trade uh, partners. Uh, just for an example, the EU Commission initiated already uh, SMEI, Single Market Emergency Instrument. This crisis government framework aims to preserve the free movement of goods, services, and the availability of essential goods and services in the event of a future emergency to the benefit of businesses across the EU. This kind of policy or the agenda for uh, trade safety should be based on multilateralism. Uh, unilateral measure only by Korea could cause the fragmentation and isolation, uh, worsening the crisis and affecting uh, particularly uh, small and medium enterprises, which hampers the supply chain to effect uh, effectively respond to emerging situation in a coordinated manner. Which is why a multilateral effort would mm -hmm. be much better, as you mentioned, Professor O. Oh, then, Professor mm -hmm. Kim, do you believe that? geopolitical tensions, especially in recent times, have perhaps rendered more unreliable global supply chains? Absolutely. You know, um, I believe everyone knows what we experienced so far, you know, the war between Ukraine and uh, Russia and war uh, between Israel and Palestine, especially the uh, conflict between uh, U.S. China, all, you know, uh, distort the supply chain. Uh, which we believed, you know, very stable and safe so far. So the, especially the conflict between the U.S. and uh, China uh, to acquire the hegemony over the high-tech uh, industry um, has been disrupting the global supply chain. Um, you know, like, like just think about just a couple of years back, you know, everybody believes the, uh, we are in the globalization age and and you know, free trade are the common standard, and everybody ha has to move around the world. So we are peaceful, and that uh, has been broken. That philosophy has been broken, right? Especially the China's urea export restriction uh, can be, can be regarded as the part of this pursuit of global hegemony against the U.S. And like Professor All mentioned, electric vehicles, high-performance semiconductors, the next generation uh, network technologies and AIs and uh, biotechnologies are all part of technologies, you know, about which these two countries want to have competitive advantage over the other country. The trend toward the protectionism or anti-globalization uh, uh, represent this kind of phenomena. Um, in addition to that, the wars between Israel and uh, Palestine, Russia and Ukraine may distort the supply chain, you know, uh, more and more for key materials and also food. I was very surprised, you know, uh, we had, we have actually one key material imported from Israel and it's nine, over 90 percent. So this way, you know, every single, these geopolitical issues have distorted every single aspect of global supply chain. 
Right, and keeping in mind what Professor Kim has just said, Professor O, oh, do you suppose prolonged conflict and protectionism would work as negative factors to Korea's growth in the new year? Uh, definitely, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, talk show is still moving. Uh, Korean economy is projected to experience 1.5 percent growth in 2023. Uh, but uh, in 2024, uh, there is an uh, obstacle to uh, accelerate the, the export growth. Uh, we have to uh, see the market side. The pace and timing of semiconductor, uh, that is the key uh, to uh, uh, make a growth of a Korean economy. Uh, you know, uh, that uh, should uh, the anticipated recovery in semiconductor demand not materialize, uh, the resurgence of the Korean economy in 2024 uh, could be postponed. In addition to sustain the higher interest rate, potential disruption in financial market it is also a point of contention due to rising credit risk could delay the global economy and subsequently hinder Korean export performance in 2024. More than anything else, it is quite certain that top risk factor of concern might be the prolonged the war, as Professor Kim commented about Russia and Ukraine crisis, Hamas Israel crisis. It cast a dark shadow. Korean economic growth could further decelerate if the situation deteriorates, causing a surge in grain and energy prices, or if financial market destabilized due to persistent high interest rate in major economies. And, and against that background of concerns, Professor Kim, let's end on a positive note then. What factor do you believe will fuel economic growth for Korea in the year 2024? Well, you know, Professor already explained the semiconductor issue and the interest issue. I um, may want to go a little bit, you know, different one to add to that. You know, first of all, we have to keep in mind, you know, uh, that uh, Korea relies on export for its uh, economic growth. Um, you know, for better performance in export, we have to develop more innovative products and services, which can allow uh, some extra margins to Korean uh, companies. Uh, but unfortunately, now at the moment, we Korea, uh, you know, uh, export relies on only like a five or a six, what you know, uh, uh, just small number of key uh, product. Um, so we have to also diversify the items or product, you know, exported. Uh, so uh, both government and companies invest more resources in R&D and innovation. And also, as, as we all know, South Korea suffers lack of, you know, supplies for key materials. So the diversification of uh, import sources of key materials will be very, very important for economic growth of South Korea. Korean government, together with companies, um, you know, need to secure stable uh, sources for the materials. Secondly, uh, like, you know, Professor O mentioned, uh, due to high interest rate, you know, uh, both Korean household and companies may experience um, quite, you know, uh, difficult uh, liquidity problem next year. Uh, managing this liquidity problem uh, in a very smart way will be another key for the economic growth of uh, uh, Korea. And Korean government may have to come up with ways to restructure uh, the current industries, um, you know, like a more uh, positive and fast way and to fund uh, companies which pursue uh, innovation. Right. So manage debt for ordinary households and, of course, diversification in terms of import market as well as export products for the government. All right, Professor Kim, thank you so much for your time and your thoughts. And Professor Oh, thank you very much for your insights. Thank, thank you for having me. me. Right. Well, that ends Thursday's edition of Issues and Insiders. We return same time tomorrow. That is Friday. So do join us then.